Oh, this is Big Red, and I, uh, it's got one of them factory Ford turbos, and it's actually a factory Ford turbo motor in it right now. 93 to match the truck. Didn't originally come with it when I bought it. So, uh, I've been a little frustrated with my performance of this thing. It's got an RD2 110. It does pretty decently. I mean, I don't have any trouble hauling, you know, 10,000 pounds um, up decent grades, but... It smoked a bit more than I want, what with the RD2-110 and Stage 1 injector nozzles. So I thought, well, I'm also not getting over 11 pounds of boost no matter what I do. I need more boost. So the wastegate's already been unhooked. Yeah, didn't affect it. I mean, I unhooked it like the day I got it. Hey, still 12 PSI of boost, 11. So I need to fix this problem. Well... That's where the Wicked Wheel comes in. So, they're about 200 bucks. Part number is WWIDI. I guess DieselSite.com makes them. I bought mine from uh, Alligator, I think. They're the ones in Coeur d'Alene. Um, they're close to me, so I figured I'd support them, because why not? Um, so, I just, within the last hour, did the swap. Got to pull the, the air box off. You have to, um, you want to detach your battery because you're going to be working right down there by the glow plug relay. The um, wastegate here, which actually I need to connect that rod back up because I want it to stay shut. That was just because I took the thing off. Um, you got to take that, there's a clip that holds the uh, wastegate in place normally and uh, you just gotta pull that clip and then pull this pull this guy off. Sometimes you gotta gotta kind of work at it with a uh, screwdriver behind there. Um, there's two bolts holding it to the turbo right here, and this flange actually acts as one of the three pieces that hold the uh, turbo on. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one on the bottom. That's a real pain to get to. There's six bolts in total that hold the. Uh, what would, it, what would it be, the um, cold side um, closing on? What I ended up doing was taking these two bolts out, these two bolts out. I could get to the one down on the bottom on this side. On this side, there's no clearance. What with the um, uh, intake hat there, it just, you just absolutely cannot get a wrench on it. So once I had five free, I just put a lever bar on it and rotated the thing enough to get clearance. With only one holding it, it slid relatively easily. But then I could get it on, pull that bolt, and then the whole turbine assembly comes off. Now, typically when you replace a wheel, you've got to get to the other side of the turbine shaft. So typically you're going to take the uh, down pipe housing end off because you got to be able to get in here and that looked like a big pain to me so I thought you know can I get it off without I got an impact so I took my little uh, impact it's a 3 8 12 point nut on there um, I ended up kind of damaging the old wheel getting it off because what I had ended up having to do is put a pair of vice grips on the uh, nose of it fairly tightly too and then um, use my impact to get it loose. I tried with just a paper towel holding on to it, but I couldn't quite get it, so um, there's a, let's see if I can focus. Come on, focus. Focus. Stupid. Okay, hard to see here, but there's actually a factory that focus. There's an oblong shape there, and that's, I'm guessing, for weight reduction, but I put two vice grip marks like here and here, grabbing it, and then getting that nut off with a pain. Then I could just pull this off with my fingers. My new Wicked Wheel, which I have the box here, but the part's actually installed, um, just slipped right on, and it uh, fit quite nicely. And then um, I had to, then I had to tighten the new nut up. Now, it's supposedly a self-tightening nut, 
so I wasn't too concerned about making it really ridiculously tight. So what I did was I just uh, grabbed onto the wheel itself with a pair with my uh, paper towel, my hand, and then used the impact to tighten down the nut as much as it could before it started slipping in my hand. I got it in there. It's not loose or anything, but it's not as tight as the one that came off. So either it's going to work or it's going to end horribly and I'm not going to get any turbo boost and nothing's going to slip and I probably ruined a $200 wheel. Which will suck, but I wasn't going to take the whole thing apart. Now, I haven't started this truck up since I did this, so we will see. Which would also work better if you actually reconnect the battery. Um, because, you know, you're actually supposed to disconnect it, but I do have to reconnect the battery. I swapped this one to marine terminals, so all I gotta do is one nut off here. Um, this guy goes over to the other battery, this guy goes down to the starter, and this guy is all the engine and everything else. So, one nut, tighten this down. Should tighten it with a wrench, but it will be tight enough to work just fine by. And, let's see if we're gonna blow something up today. So, key on. Let's turn off the air conditioner and stuff, glow plugs. Make and boost. Let's see how she does. Oh, and there's the truck I rescued back from the dead. Uh, hype, what was it? ATS Gen 1, I think, on there? Or no, yeah, yeah, it's an ATS Gen 1 with the big square box. Seven with an F, uh, it's actually got a 7.3 in it now, and uh, it runs 600 bucks. So, I'm just gonna go down to the driveway and uh, see if we can make some boost here. I've been told I'm not supposed to like floor it down the driveway badly, and I'm renting so. Okay, we're clear. Here we go. Come on, focus in here. Well, I got 11 out of it in second. 